Hello and welcome to another tech video on this channel. In this video, we are going to see how to access private EC2 and RDC instances over the internet. There are multiple ways you can do that, but for this demo, we are going to access it via a jump server. So without wasting much time, let's dive into the video. So here we have a typical 3 tier VPC subnet architecture with a public subnet layer and two private subnet layers, one for application and the other for databases. The ask here is to connect the RDS instance and the app EC2 instance from my Mac machine over the internet. However, since these are private instances, we won't be able to connect directly to these from our local machine. To facilitate this requirement, we have something called as a jump server or a bastion host. We can connect to this instance from our local machine as this is accessible over the internet since it resides in the public subnet. And from this jump server, in turn, we can connect to our private RDS and EC2 instances. The RDS MySQL will listen on the port 3306 and app will listen on port 22 for SSH. As a first step, let's provision the network infrastructure required for this exercise. We will provision a VPC, private and public subnets, route tables, internet gateway and an add gateway. Now let's head on to the AWS console, choose VPC, then click create VPC. Under the resources to create section, we see a couple of options, VPC only and VPC and more. The VPC only option has very few parameters related to VPC. However, I want to show the other resources as well from this new console. So I'll choose VPC and more. As soon as you click VPC and more, on the right hand side, we see a preview window where you see a visual representation of what resources it is going to create. With this new console, you have the option to auto-generate name tags or customize the same according to your requirements. For now, I am moving ahead. At the end, I will add our custom tags as well. Let's keep IPv4 CIDR block as default. We don't need IPv6 CIDR block for this exercise. Choose the tenancy as default. Under the number of availability zones, when you choose 3, a new subnet section opens up for the US East 1C. If you want to have maximum availability, you can go ahead with the same. For this exercise, I am keeping it as 2. Now under the private subnets, I will choose 4 as I want to have 2 private app and 2 private DB subnets to complete our 3 tier subnet architecture. As soon as I choose 4, we can see that 2 more subnets are added in the preview screen. For NAT gateway, let's choose in one AZ as this is just a demo. For production scenario, one per AZ is recommended. VPC endpoints, let's keep it as none. In the coming videos, I will cover this in detail. DNS option, let's keep it as default. As discussed in the beginning, let me add the custom name tags to our resources. For VPC, I'll give demo VPC. For subnets, I'll start with public subnets. I will choose the naming convention as demo web public subnet and the availability zone code. Similar for a private app subnets, I'll keep demo app private subnet and the availability zone code. And finally for database subnets, demo db private subnet and the availability zone code. For route tables, let's add demo web public route table for public subnets and demo app private route table 1a, 1b. And for databases, demo db private route table 1a and 1b. Moving to network connections, Let's keep demo internet gateway and demo NAT gateway. Once done, let's quickly validate all the configurations and click create VPC. We can see here that the VPC creation process has started. All other component creation except NAT gateway is very quick. Let's quickly verify what all components the wizard has created. It has created the VPC, private and public subnets, route tables, internet gateway, and in add gateway. Click on view VPC and under the resource map section, we can see a visual representation of all the VPC resources that we have created. Now let's move to the second part of the provisioning that is jump server, application server and the database server instances. Choose EC2, click instances and then choose launch instances. First we are going to create a jump server in the public subnet. For name, let's keep the same naming convention. Enter demo jump server. Under application and OS images, I'm choosing Amazon Linux 2 as Amazon Linux 2023 is relatively new. Keep the architecture as 64 bit. Keep instance type as T2 micro. Create a new key pair with the name tag as demo jump server key. 
Keep rest of the options as is and choose create key pair. The key pair PEM file is downloaded on my local machine. We will use this at a later stage in the demo. Under the network settings, click on edit. Switch the VPC to demo VPC which we created some time back. Choose any public subnet. I am selecting demo web public subnet 1A. Auto assign public IP should be enabled as this server resides in a public subnet and will require a public IP. Let's create a new security group with name demo jump server SG. Copy the same in the description. Under security group rule, let's keep the rule as is and add a relevant description like SSH from the internet. Here we see an alert that our instance can be accessed from all over the internet. But since this is a demo, I don't have a problem. In your case, if you have a static IP provided by your ISP, you may add that. Keeping the storage as 8 GB as I won't keep any data on this machine. And finally choose launch instance. We see here that the instance is being created and it is in the initializing state. After jump server, let's provision the app server. Give name as demo app server, AMI as Amazon Linux 2, instance type as T2 Micro. Create a new piggy pair as demo app server key. Edit the network settings, choose demo VPC. Now since this is a private server, choose a private subnet. I am choosing demo app private subnet 1A. Keep auto assign public IP as disabled because it is in the private subnet and we don't require any public IP. Create a new security group demo app server SG. Copy the same under description. Under the inbound rule, instead of anywhere, choose custom. And in the source, select the jump server security group which was created in the previous step. Under description, add SSH from the jump server. Keep rest of the configurations as is and choose launch instance. Here we see both the instances are running and are being initialized. Meanwhile, let's start provisioning the RDS instance. Search for RDS. Before we start creating the database instance, first we will need to create the subnet group. Go to the subnets group from the left navigation pane. Click create db subnet group. Give a name demo subnet group. Choose the demo VPC. In the add subnet section, add the availability zones 1A and 1B. Select the corresponding subnets which are tagged as database subnets. If you are not sure, go to the VPC console and validate and select and click create. Now that the subnet group has been created, Let's provision the database instance. From the left pane, click on databases, create database. Under the database creation method, I am selecting standard create. Select MySQL as the engine type. Let's ignore the other engine options for now and proceed. I am selecting free tier as the use case as it's for demo purpose. Under DB instance identifier, I am adding demo DB. I am keeping the master username as admin, entering master password and confirming the same. Keeping the instance class as T3 micro, reducing the allocated storage to 20 GB. For connectivity, I am choosing don't connect to an EC2 compute resource as I want to have connectivity from two instances that is jump and the app server, which I will show in the later part of the demo. Selecting the VPC which we created earlier, that is demo VPC. Demo subnet group is already selected, keeping the public accessibility as no, as we intend to keep this DB as a private instance. Let's create a new security group with demo DBSG as name. AZ preference I am choosing as 1B. Authentication I am keeping as password authentication. Leave rest of the configuration as is and click on choose database. We see here that now the database is in creating state. Meanwhile, the RDS instance is being created. 
let's try to connect to the jump server from our local machine go to the aws ec2 console select the jump server and click connect button copy the chmod command from the ssh client tab i have the terminal already open the keys are downloaded in the downloads folder and run the chmod command using this command we have given read only permissions to our key file after that let's go back again to the aws console and copy the ssh example string and execute in the terminal enter yes and now we are inside the jump server which was created in the public subnet we could connect to this instance because it had a public ip once you are in the jump server you are inside the aws vpc space and can access all private resources provided you have security group rules enabled for the same the main purpose of this video was to demonstrate how to access private ec2 and rds instances from your jump server so now within your ec2 instance create a ssh key with name demo app server key dot pem using the vi command the pem file was already downloaded during the provisioning of your app server open that in a text editor of your choice and paste it in the terminal save this file and give read permissions to the newly created file now copy the example ssh string for the app server and execute the same in the jump server terminal now here we are able to successfully log in to the app server from our local machine via the jump server let's verify the private ip to check whether we are in the right app server instance so the ip ends with 137.135 the first part is complete let's try accessing the rds instance from the jump server let's exit the app server and go to the aws console search for rds click on the db instances demo db copy the endpoint since we don't have the mysql client installed on the jump server let's quickly do that by executing the command sudo yum install mysql once it is installed execute the command mysql h for the host copy the host name or the endpoint hyphen u for the username that is admin and hyphen p for the password enter the password that we added while provisioning the rds instance and press enter so as you see nothing is happening it is because during the provisioning we haven't added any security group rules to confirm the connectivity let's quickly install the telnet and double check the same to check the connectivity use the command telnet the host name or the endpoint and the port number that is 3306 this confirms that there is some networking issue go back to the aws console click on the vpc security group click on the security group id edit inbound rules delete the existing rule which was automatically created and create a new mysql rule and in the source add the security group id for the jump server and add appropriate description for the same similarly add another rule for the application server as eventually even our app server will require database connectivity add the security group id and add a proper description and click on save rules now let's head on to the terminal and check the telnet command again and it says connected let's try the mysql command which we tried earlier So we have successfully logged into the RDS instance as well as the EC2 instance from the jump server. Now let's perform the same steps on the app server. Exit from MySQL and SSH into the app server. Install MySQL client and run the same MySQL command to connect to the RDS instance. So we are able to connect from the app server as well. This completes our demo. In this video we have learned how to access private EC2 and RDS instances from your local machine over the internet via a public facing jump server since i had a mac machine i could show using the terminal app so to demonstrate the same via windows machine i have created a temporary windows instance to simulate a windows desktop i have copied the app server pem file putty and putty gen utilities on the server i will add the links to the same in the description box 
ओपन पुट्टी जेन क्लिक लोड ब्राउज द पेम फाइल सेव द प्राइवेट की आई एम कीपिंग द सेम नेमिंग कॉन्वेंशन ओनली अपडेटिंग द एक्सटेंशन टू पीपीके एंड क्लिकिंग ऑन सेफ नाउ ओपन पुट्टी कॉपी द डीएनएस फॉर द जम्प सर्वर एंटर द यूजर नेम दैट इज ईसी टू हैफ एन यूजर एट द रेट एंड पेज द जम्प सर्वर डीएनएस नाउ ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड गो टू एस एस एच कोलैप्स ऑथ सिलेक्ट क्रेडेंशियल्स ब्राउज द प्राइवेट की फॉर ऑथेंटिकेशन एंड क्लिक ओपन क्लिक द एक्सेप्ट बटन ऑन द प्रॉम्ड एंड नाउ वी हैव लॉग्ड इन टू द पब्लिक जम्प सर्वर फ्रॉम आवर विंडोज मशीन एज वेल ट्राई एक्सेसिंग द एप सर्वर इट्स बेसिकली द सेम जम्प सर्वर वी आर एक्सेसिंग फ्रॉम द विंडोज मशीन दिस कंप्लीट्स अवर डेमो होप दिस वीडियो हैज बीन हेल्पफुल टू यू इफ यू हैव एनी फीडबैक और अ वीडियो रिक्वेस्ट प्लीज लेट मी नो इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग टिल द एंड बाय एंड टेक केयर